uh, based on a, uh, an interpretation of future technology and perhaps not uh, so much future fundamental science, but I'm sure we'll find it uh, absolutely fascinating. It's a talk on optical technologies at Google uh, for a brighter future, and I'd like to ask um, Bernard Kress to come to the stage, and I'd like you to join with me in welcoming him. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege and an honor to uh, be talking in front of such a distinguished uh, audience. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, I also feel at home when I look at this uh, spectrum of light, um, which is actually covering the Google logo since more than uh, 15 uh, long years now. So optical technologies for a brighter future, uh, big talk, but uh, as you will see, this is uh, actually not long-term future, but this is today, and this is a very short-term future. I'm working at uh, Google X, which is um, uh, a part of Google that is dedicated to new projects and uh, bringing these new projects to reality. For example, you might have heard about um, Loon Project, which is aiming at uh, providing the planet with um, internet coverage in uh, very remote areas with a myriad of stratospheric balloons, Project IRIS, which is based on uh, contact lenses, so all sorts of technologies that are aiming at improving health of uh, people um, by integrating uh, sensors and other devices on contact lenses. Um, Project GLASS, uh, which is uh, a smart glass, and I'm gonna talk about it uh, later, and I have one here, actually. Project um, Chauffeur, which is um, the self-driving car, and I'm sure uh, all of you have heard about this. Project Makani, which is a renewable energy project based on a kite-based wind turbine. And Project Wing, which is a drone project aimed at uh, providing um, supplies, critical supplies such as uh, medic, uh, medics to remote areas of the globe. So, Self-driving car. This is our self-driving car. Uh, and uh, where are the, the light-based technologies? Well, for example, this uh, funny-looking device on top of the car is called the LiDAR. It's an infrared uh, laser scanner that scans the space in front, on the side, and behind the car uh, up, to, uh, up to actually a kilometer. And how does it scan? Well, this is an example of a uh, scan and acquisition map be, um, made by this, uh, this LiDAR. Uh, and um, then there's a software that distinguishes between is this a tree, is this a human being, is this a pet, is this a motorcycle, is this a cycle, is this a car, is this a truck, and then takes adequate um, decisions. Uh, today, most of the accidents, the car accidents, are due to human factors. Not today. Uh, unfortunately, um, the, the largest human factor is texting while you're driving. Don't text and drive. Driving under influence. Driving when you get drowsy or even road rage. Now a self-driving car doesn't have these problems. Um, there are other scanners that we're developing. For example, this is a, a 3D scanner that is integrated in a cell phone or in a tablet, which is not based on LiDAR technology, but still based on infrared laser. Um, this one is based on structured elimination, so we use a hologram in front of um, the, the laser. We can also use time of flight, uh, in which case we would use a um, MEMS scanner, uh, and we would paint directly a 3D image uh, behind the tablet or the cell phone. This is used to acquire the, free, the um, your surrounding so that you can actually interact with it in digital space for many different applications. Health. Light technologies, and especially optics, to provide better health. Well, this is an example of our glucose uh, sensor that is uh, based on a smart contact lens. Uh, you can see the, con the contact, sorry, the contact lens uh, base, soft contact lens base, the glucose sensor, and of course, you need a chip and an antenna to provide the logic and the communication with, for example, your cell phone or your tablet or whatever you want to communicate with. This is another example of, um, um, of a project which is uh, still a little bit stealth. 
Now, we have, forgot to tell, we have a few public projects at Google X and a few stealth projects. Of course, I'm only going to talk about the public projects. Um, this is a, a new project uh, that we have with uh, Novartis in Switzerland to uh, uh, aim at uh, improving vision with uh, miniature optics on a contact lens. And of course, we can also use optics and light-based technologies, smart light-based technologies, to augment your vision. That would be a smart glass. Now, smart glass, smart glasses, I think this is the time where I put my smart glasses on. Um, smart glasses is actually a natural evolution of information technology, going from desktop computer to laptop to tablet to phablet to cell phone to watch and maybe also to um, a device that you wear on your head as a regular pair of glasses that is connected to the amazing power of the cloud in, in, in terms of computing power and data storage and provides you a display that is actually an augmented display, which is a see-through display in order to develop augmented reality applications or contextual display applications, such as in Google Smart Glass, Google Glass. So this is, this is Google Glass. This is the first edition, the Explorer edition. It's, it's now uh, discontinued because we actually um, graduated from Google X. We are actually now uh, a separate entity uh, within Google. Happens two weeks ago. Uh, but there are many other optical technologies and architectures available, available today. Uh, Google Glass is based on prehistoric optics. Refractive, reflective mirrors, but you can also use waveguide optics, holographic optics, waveguide holographic optics, diffractive optics, waveguide diffractive optics. You can also use, why not, metamaterials, metasurfaces, photonic crystals, surface plasmons, nano antenna optics, or even parity time symmetric optics, a concept that we, uh, we borrowed from uh, quantum mechanics. You can implement this in a regular optical uh, system, but you can also implement this in a light field projection system. Now, everybody knows about the light show, light field digital camera. You can also reverse the, uh, the direction of light and provide light field projectors, which actually uh, provide true 3D display without the traditional convergence focus disparity that you find in most of the AR and VR systems, augmented reality and virtual reality systems that you can buy today. OK, talked about displaying smart glasses. What else can we do with light-based technology in smart glasses? Well, we can implement human-machine interaction. The first human-machine interaction uh, would be voice recognition, which is not linked to, to a light, temple side trackpad, head motion trackpad, but also hand gesture sensing, that would be optical. Gaze tracking, so I can look at the different parts of the screen and then select different parts of, uh, of that screen. Eye gesture sensing. So I just took a few photos. Um, and even brain wave sensing, which is not the far future, which is actually today already. So enterprise smart glass use cases, where are they used? For example, engineering, teaching, supply chain, supply chain management, medical, firefighting, and law enforcement. Consumer smart eyewear is very different. In a consumer smart, consumer smart eyewear, you, you actually want to integrate the optical combiner in the prescription lens, which is a big challenge today which cannot be done with traditional optic and traditional light-based uh, technologies. Um, so it's a little more complicated. But that would be the basis for consumer smart eyewear. So in summary, light-based technologies are, of course, key technologies to Google for developing consumer products uh, aimed at improving the, the quality of life in all aspects of life, such as health, Talked about health, communication, Google Fiber, uh, Loon, security, renewable energy, mapping, and transportation. 
And in order to achieve such ambitious goals, Google is investing the entire spectrum of light-based technologies, and I have talked about all these fantastic optical technologies that are a little more complex than refractive and reflective optics by investing heavily in new projects, especially through Google X Labs. So Mr. Glass tells me I have uh, five more minutes, so I'm going to use them uh, for some uh, personal slides, and, um, which are not uh, part of the regular um, Google slide deck. So I'd like to introduce you to Father um, Jean-Olivier Ra Well, this is one of the, the, other the other problem with Madagascar. The last names are very, very complicated. So let's try again. I'd like to introduce you to Father Jean-Olivier Ranaïvois Rinivaux, a good friend of mine since uh, eight years. I still can't pronounce his name. Um, and uh, he's living in a remote area in Madagascar, in the northwestern of Madagascar. He's uh, in charge of, um, uh, of a dispensary, of a small field hospital, and of an orphanage, and of course, a few schools uh, among the villages that uh, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, overseeing. Now, this is very difficult, especially if there's no road going to these villages. If there's only a dirt road, and you cannot use it when it's raining. During the monsoon period, you cannot use it. Um, and it's very problematic if you need uh, uh, medical supplies delivered very quickly. So one of the things that uh, Google X, the projects developed at Google X, could actually provide to Favre Jean Olivier are the following. Imagine that he uses his regular cell phone and just points it at the sky. Not a satellite cell phone, but a regular cell phone. And having internet connection, which is, by the way, not regulated by the country in which he, which he lives, which is provided by the stratospheric loon balloons. And then, in case of a medical emergency, he could actually ask one of the drones from the Project Wing to deliver in this very remote area of northwestern Madagascar some critical medical supplies. And of course, you need energy. And we talked about energy and lighting and how important it is to remote areas and small villages. And for example, he could actually use a version of a Makani kite-based wind turbine in order to generate the, the energy that he requires and then store this kite if there's no wind or if there's a storm coming. And of course, again, in case of, an emer uh, of a medical emergency, in his little field hospital where there are only nurses, there's no doctor, well, you, you could and, and if, if you would have a critical case such as a, maybe an appendicectomy, well, a nurse could actually provide the surgery while wearing Google Glass and having a surgeon in Stanford or even here in Paris looking at exactly what she's looking, seeing exactly which instrument she's, she's, uh, she's using, and telling her exactly how to perform an operation. Because there's a camera on Google Glass. And Google Glass could be linked directly to Loon in order to perform such, a, such a, an operation. So, uh, I have one more minute. So in conclusion, um, yeah, I, I'd like to say that there are actually two main reasons why I'm, I'm proud to work at Google, and especially Google X. First is because I fall in love with light and light technologies long time ago, 20 years ago. But also, and I think the most um, important reason is that I see what um, such projects can provide um, uh, uh, a person like uh, Fabre Jean Olivier in his remote area in uh, north, northwestern uh, Madagascar. Thank you. <laughs>